Hello, this is Quick Skills, and today I'm going to be showing you how to play multiplayer games for the Nintendo Switch ROMs found on your 12TB hard drive purchased off of AliExpress. If you have yet to see my review videos of these 12TB hard drives, I do recommend you go to my channel and start there. And if you have yet to purchase a 12TB hard drive for yourself, in the description of this video I'll have a link that'll take you to the exact same vendor for this device that I'm showing you here today, so that way the tutorial works with what you purchased. Now to get started with this tutorial, the first thing you're going to want to do is have all your controllers connected to Bluetooth, and we can check that by clicking down here and clicking this arrow. It'll show you the three controllers that I have connected for the purpose of this video. We have two GuildKit controllers and one 8-bit Do controller. If you want to buy the exact controllers that I have here, I'll put a link to Amazon where you can get those controllers, but it is not necessary. Any Bluetooth controller or USB controller that you have will work for this tutorial. The next thing you're going to want to do is connect your 12 terabyte hard drive to your computer and access your ROMs. And so to do that, we're going to click this core type R folder. We're going to go to collections. We're going to go to computers. We're going to go to ROMs. And from here, we have access to all the front ends that will allow you to access the ROMs and emulators on your device. So we have Hyperspin Attraction, LaunchBox, Play Night, and RetroBat. You do have the option of loading up RetroBat to connect to your Switch games. However, for this tutorial, we're only going to be using LaunchBox. And from LaunchBox, we have the option of BigBox and LaunchBox. I do prefer BigBox because when it is loaded, you are able to interact with uh, big box with your controller. So let's go ahead and open up big box. Now the big box is on our screen. Let's go ahead and test every controller that we have connected. So player one is moving big box. Player number two is moving the big box screen. And player number three is moving the big box screen. So that shows us that all three controllers are connected to big box. But before we open up a ROM, I want you to open up menu, open up options. And an option near the bottom is called controller mappings. We're going to open up that. This controller mappings only affects big box. It does not affect any game that you play inside of big box. But what it does is when you have a game opened up, especially player number two, anytime I hit left and right bumper, it was exiting me out of the game. And so to fix that problem, what we're going to do is we're looking for close the active window. Those inputs that you see there, we're going to remove them by pushing A on our controller, and then we're going to push escape on our keyboard. And so now we don't have any selections for close the active window. Now that you've done that, we are ready to load a Nintendo Switch ROM. Let's start by playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch. We are almost ready to play a multiplayer game on our Nintendo Switch. The next thing that we need to do is push escape on our controller. That's going to minimize our screen just a little bit so that we can get this menu here. The next step is to hit emulation. And you're going to go down to configure. Once you open up the configuration menu, you're going to go down to controls and we're going to see which controllers are connected and how they're configured. So we have player one, the green light means the controller is connected. Player two, the green light is off, so it is not connected. Player 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 are all off as well. And so for player 1, we're going to make a few uh, adjustments here. So if we see this drop-down menu, we have a few options. We do want a pro controller, but this input device, it might be defaulted to keyboard only. What we're going to do is we're going to select the controller that you want to play with. So the black controller that you cannot see because it is in real life, but my controller is black. This is the one that we're going to select. For player one and you can see all the inputs are inputted automatically for me so we're going to apply those changes now we're going to go to player two we're going to connect the controller and we are going to select another pro controller and now we're going to go to xbox one controller one that is a white controller that i have in real life and we can see all the buttons are mapped automatically and so we're going to apply those changes again and now we're going to go to player number three and you can see it's selecting dual joy cons. We're going to go to Pro Controller again, and we're going to go to 8 bit do SN30 Pro. Now, here's an issue what to do if the mapping doesn't automatically happen on its own? So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to click every, si we're going to have to click every single button 
on this screen. So first we're going to work on the left stick category. And to do up on our controller, you're going to click it with your mouse. After you push the OK button, you're going to do exactly what it says on the screen, left and up, left and up. So you can see it moved the axis 1 and the axis 0 for us. So that's already all set. We don't have to do the other three. Now we're going to do this one, and it's waiting for us to push this button in. So we're pushing it in. So that is now selected. Now we're going to do the D-pad. We're going up, down, left, right. Now we're going to do left button, left bumper, and the bottom row, the trigger, left trigger. Now we're going to select the minus on our controller, and we're going to select the plus on our controller. That can be select and start. We're not going to select a capture. We're not going to select a home. We're going to do our right bumper and our right trigger. Now we have the X button. That's going to be the topmost button, the leftmost button, the bottommost button, and the rightmost button. And the reason why I say that is the button might have different letters on them, and it's not important that the letters printed on the controller match. It just matters that you hit north, south, east, and west correctly. And now we're going to configure our right stick. We're doing left and right on the right stick, so you can see it's all configured there. Well, now we're going to press this in, and we are now all set. So we're going to apply those changes. If you do have motion controls, you can configure those. I don't know if this one has motion controls, so we're not going to mess with it. And now, after doing all those steps, I think we are finally ready to play a multiplayer game on the Nintendo Switch. So just like in true Nintendo Switch fashion, we do have to push left and right on our controller left and right bumper on the controller. So now you can see we have all three players configured. So here we have player one. Well, let's, let's have player one as Link, player two as Pikachu, and we'll do player three as Mario. And now we are ready to play. And so I am using Pikachu now. Now I'm using Link. And this is really hard. I wish I had more people in here. I'm using one hand on one controller, one hand on another. So forgive me if I'm not playing skillfully enough. But we can see. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do all three. So I have my arm controlling one controller. I have another controller button smashing. I'm just button smashing with, with whatever I can reach. I just want to show you that all three are, are working. I just ran out with Link. I have no idea what's controlling what. But I just want to show you that there's no input delay or any slowdown. I'm trying to see, where's Mario? Okay, there we go. There's Mario. Mario is being controlled by... I don't know what Mario is being controlled by. I have all three controllers kind of spread out in front of me. I'm just kind of in-pushing and button-mashing as fast as I can. But, as you can see, this is working. We don't have any input delay. Everything is pretty snappy. This is basically a perfect emulation of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you made it this far, if you have any other questions about emulation or in general how to play or configure your 12 terabyte hard drive, leave a comment. I happily will answer anything that I have uh, the access or means to do. So th these things are kind of fun for me because before making this video, I did not know how to connect multiple controllers to my Nintendo Switch, but I knew it could be done. So I spent a few hours messing with the settings until I got it exactly the way I wanted it at home. And so, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment. Let me know if you have one of these, and if you found this video helpful, let me know if there's other multiplayer games that we should be playing on this Nintendo Switch. Well, thank you so much for watching. This is Quick Skills. You have a good day.